Everybody, please take their seats. Welcome, members and guests, to uh, full committee today. Uh, today's Tuesday, February 1st, 2022, and I hereby call the local government committee to order. Madam Clerk, will you please take the roll? Representatives Calfee, Carr, Chisholm, Gant, Helton, Hodges, Holesclaw, Leatherwood, Love, Manis, Miller, Moody, Moon, Reedy, Rudd, Shaw, Williams, Vice Chairman Wright, Chairman Crawford, Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, are there any personal orders or announcements from the committee? Let the record reflect that Representative Carr is excused. Today we got two bills on the calendar. Shouldn't take us very long. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. House Bill 0335 by Chairman Hicks. We got a proper motion and second on the bill. I do see that it has an amendment. Can you give me the amendment number, sir? I sure can. That amendment number is 11947. We have... We've got a proper motion and second on the amendment. Uh, Chairman Hicks, you're recognized. Yes, amendment. this amendment simply changes the effective date. Okay. Is there any questions about the amendment? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of amendment number 011947, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The amendment is now on the bill. You're recognized on the bill, Chairman Hicks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. House Bill 335 uh, simply amends the Barry Brady Firefighter uh, Cancer Presumption Act of 2019, a bill we passed uh, in 2019. Bill Simple adds testicular and leukemia, testicular cancer and leukemia, to the list of cancers uh, that are covered under the current cancer presumption law. Any question of the sponsor? No. We have a question... Uh, Representative Holtzclaw, you're recognized. Thank you, Chairman. And Chairman Hicks, we're so glad that you're so concerned with all that. But my question would be, if your hire caught fire, what kind of carcinogenics would that, that expose to the fireman? That is a good Representative question. Representative Hicks. Good question. I don't have the answer. Follow up, Chairman? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hicks. We, we appreciate you bringing this bill, really do. Thank you, Chairman. Any other questions for the sponsor? Seeing none, we're ready to vote on House Bill 0335 as amended. Please say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Your bill passes. It will go to Finance, Ways, and Means, sir. All right. Thank you, Chairman and Committee. Our next bill is House Bill 1677 by Chairman Sapicki. Got a proper motion in the second. We do have an amendment. We have two amendments. I have 011829 and 012112. Which amendment would you like to add, sir? Mr. Chairman, we'll be using 012112. So we will dispense with amendment 11829 and we will be dealing with amendment 01211. We have a proper motion in second on the amendment. Chairman Sapicki, you're recognized on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. This, uh, members, what this bill simply does is there's a, it, it creates an opportunity for a county to be able to post special meetings called that can't meet the time requirement in a timely manner. And if you look at the amendment, it's all in, in, in the first, uh, uh, after section one, number one, it says posting the notice in a location where a member of the community may become aware of such notice and on a website maintained by the county, that's important, maintained by the county if the county has a website. So if they cannot get it in, in a local paper in time to meet the deadline, this bill would give them another option so that the county can, can conduct their business. Mr. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'll be happy to answer questions. Do we have any questions on the amendment? Uh, Representative Shaw. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Please. I love this bill. You just don't have radio in it. 
Any, uh, any uh, Rep, uh, Chairman Moon, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank the sponsor. When this is posted, if if the occurrence is it can't meet the publication deadline, when it appears on the county's website, county maintained website, how long will that stay up on the website? Chairman Sapicki? Normally, sir, it would stay until after the meeting has taken place, and then the county clerk would step in and make sure, like they do with newspaper ads, they will get a photo, a, a, a picture of that of that um, posting on the website, make sure it's time stamped, and then the county clerk would be responsible for those records moving forward. Chairman Moon? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one thing I really like about this bill, it actually provides a longer period of time where the public can be notified of this meeting. Special call meetings are just that. There's some urgent business that needs to take place before the next regular county commission meeting. Mm -hmm. So if you miss the newspaper the day of the notice, that's one shot. If it goes on the website, it's up for uh, numerous days, preferably five days at least. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Uh, represent, I mean, Chairman Williams, you're recognized. Thank you. What's the current uh, duration of time for counties as it relates to notification, especially? Chairman meetings? Sapicki? Uh, I think it does have some variance there. Like, for instance, at the beginning of the year, the county commission will publish all of their normal meetings there. Uh, and then some of them will take that, like Murray County does, and we put that on our website, so it's always there at all times. But there are certain deadlines sometimes i i'm please don't quote me but it's like maybe 10 days seven day notice sometimes it gets pretty tricky in in some counties to have some trouble with notifications chairman williams i i like uh chairman moon said earlier i i can appreciate and i i do think it's important that we notify the public i guess my only concern is is there's not a there's still not a minimum threshold based on what i see in the bill so for instance if you miss a deadline and it required 10 days there's not a there's not a, a bottom, if you will, where it has to be on there for three days. Seems to me like there ought to be a minimum so you don't put it 10 minutes, put it on the website 10 minutes before the meeting. Is that something you'd consider or no? Chairman Sapicki. Well, I, I think uh, if you get into that minimum, you get into an issue there of, well, wh how we determine what's minimum. It could be different for different entities. I think the public would make notice of that. Uh, and I'm sure there are people sitting here in the audience that if something like that happened, they, they'd be pouncing on that right away. The object of this bill isn't to allow a county commission to hide something from people. It is another means. If they would have to show that they could not get it in a newspaper, so to speak, they'd have to prove that. If they're trying to hide something there, I would assume that the members of this general assembly would take exception to that. Chairman Williams. Thank you. I, under the given example that I just gave though, if, if, if the deadline was seven days and you missed it, by day because of publication for the newspaper, then there's no impetus on the county to, to post uh, that until 10 minutes before the meeting. I'm just concerned that you would meet the threshold of the requirement as it relates to notification uh, in its under the terms of this bill, but it wouldn't really give notice if you only did it 10 minutes before the meeting. So that's why I'm a little bit concerned and i'd hate for us to find out that this was a problem after we found out for from a year's mm -hmm. worth of operations that people in fact were notified but it wasn't enough time for them to really uh attend a meeting or at least participate on live stream chairman sapiki great great point and let me hopefully i can leave you on this county commissions are already held to public notice of a certain time period right so they would be working their best to make sure that they meet that guideline in the letter of the law right now the only reason why they'd be able to use this is if for some unforeseen reason, some unforeseen reason that they could not, a county commission could not say, we're going to have a special call meeting tomorrow. That'd be in violation of state law because they have to have a, a time period there. All this does is say, and, and, there's, and I'm trying not to get into details here because I don't want to throw anybody under the bus here as newspapers, but there are times when local counties try to do something in the letter of the law and because there's a difference in how it gets in there, they miss it by day. Well, now they got to postpone that meeting. They have to re-enter it and do it all over again. If the county meets the, uh, if the county does everything they can, like their attorney should keep them legal, that's what he's, they're paid to do. If a county commission said, hey, we're going to have a special call meeting tomorrow on this big issue, the county attorney should step in and say that's in violation of state law. 
you have to you have to try to this is the letter of the law says a certain amount of time this says is if you can't meet that letter of the law you better make sure you have a good reason for it chairman thank, williams thank you chairman uh chairman Spicky, I, I recognize that I, i'm just i'm a little bit concerned that there's an unintended consequence here because the original example was given was for a special call meeting mm -hmm. The nature of special sessions and special mm -hmm. called meetings is notification. I'm just concerned that there wouldn't be enough time, even if they missed uh, a print deadline for a newspaper, that there wouldn't be enough time for an attorney to get with the county mayor, or whoever it might be, because this would have, my understanding, be any public public meeting as it relates to it. Thank you. Chairman Sapicki. Let, let me clarify that real quick. I, I, I do apologize. In Section D, it says... Uh, a special called meeting, special meeting. Normal business could not be conducted this way. Representative Calfee, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, how does your bill address the counties that don't have a county maintained website? Chairman, so picky. Then they would not be able to participate in this, sir. Okay. Because it says specifically in the bill that it has to be a county maintained website. There are right. some counties that partner with chambers of commerce, but the information on the county side is not updated on a regular basis. So that would not that would not count. That's why this amendment was filed with the help of some people here to make sure that you have to have a county maintained website and is current and active, sir. Do you know how many counties don't have one? I think the answer is two. Thank you. Two. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Rudd, you're recognized. <laughs> I was just going to say thank you. This is, you had pointed out, just special called meetings. This is really needed with with uh, our uh, our ability to communicate with the public, especially in a special called meeting with a short notice. With newspapers going out, many of them going to fully digital, others going to biweekly. Um, it's becoming harder and harder to communicate, and this gives a little bit more flexibility, and I want to thank you for bringing the bill. Thank you, sir. Um. Chairman Wright, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this required notice is not changing any required notice time that is in place right now. Chairman Sapicki. That'd be correct, sir. The only thing that when we say required time, it's the required time of the publishing entity may say you have to give us your public notice nine days in advance or some greater period than the actual time period required right now in law for the entity, the county commission, for example, to give their proper notice. We're not changing any of that proper notice time. Is that correct? Chairman Sapicki. I believe the answer, if I followed you, is yes, that's correct. Okay. To, again, What's in code now about proper yes. notice stays the same. Correct. This notice that we're saying, we're, we're applying the terminology to the publisher's required time. <clears throat> they could say, we cannot publish your notice except you give us nine days notice. I think we're getting into yeah. an area of semantics I like your bill. It just makes sure that there is more public notice of special called meetings. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh -huh. Chairman Moon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And hopefully to clear up this matter, if we go out of session and go to Matt, uh, our legal counsel, is 55105 is, a, is the code section we're dealing with adding a new uh, provision. So it may be helpful to all the members they weren't in subcommittee to to be we'd be very clear on which section of the code we're dealing with thank you mr chairman um chairman moon we're getting ready to go out of session in here from a couple of speakers would it be all right if we wait till we go out of session we'll recognize him first we got one more speaker on the list and that's representative shaw thank you mr chairman well i've solved the problem y'all just won't listen to me if you would add radio, if it was a seven-day period, they could do it that day. There's, and, and I'm serious about this. Mm -hmm. There's no time to have to print anything. You verbally can put it on and announce it that very same day. 
and you would really solve all of these issues you're talking about. Thank you. Uh, without any objection, we will go out of session, and uh, we will hear from legal answering uh, Chairman Moon's question first. Thank you, Matt Mundy from Legal. Um, yes, we're, we're just adding a new subsection uh, that is an exception from the general requirement that you have a five-day publication requirement in a newspaper of general circulation. If you can't meet that requirement, that's when the new subsection kicks in and requires a reasonable period of notice. There's other parts of the statute for special meetings in different contexts that specify a 48 hour period is adequate. And I think that would probably a reasonable person, an attorney or a court would look at that 48 hour period as a, as a reasonable period of time by looking at the rest of the statute and how it operates. But it could also go up to that five day period as well. Chairman Moon. Under normal circumstances for a special call meeting, five days, but if it's an, an emergency, then 48 hours is the, is really the minimum, I believe. Is that, am I off track or am I on Legal? track? In other contexts in the statute, 48 hours is the minimum threshold. And I think that that would be a reasonable time frame to consider reasonable notice in the context of this new subsection. As the floor as Representative Williams was talking about. Representative Williams, you're recognized. Thank you. As a follow-up though, uh, your comments say that it's inferred that 48 hours would be the minimum, but the, the amendment doesn't necessarily refer to the 48 hours. So is there anything to keep someone from meeting the statute if it were 46 hours prior to the meeting, the special call meeting, or would it have to be determined by the courts or an attorney? Legal, you're recognized. I think if you got to the point where you're, you were going below 48 hours, maybe not 46 hours, but maybe 30 minutes, then you have an issue that where you may have some litigation. If there's an issue at the meeting that involves someone's involves a right of a person, they want a court to look at it. And that probably, well, I don't think that would be substantial notice. Representative Williams. I guess that was the reason why I made the comment about a minimum requirements bottom uh, as it relates to the variance between five days and 48 hours, we don't clearly give uh, a bottom in this language. And so uh, it seems to me like it might be better, best clarified in statute if we said that it, that even if this means is utilized, that it can't be less than 48 hours. Any other questions? Um, one, Chairman Moon. One quick follow-up. 55105 is the code section we are amending and in that code section, it is five days public notice in the newspaper of general circulation. Is that correct, counsel? Legal? Yes, that is correct. Any other questions for the legal team? If not, we will hear from our first speaker today, and that is Miss Deborah Fisher. If you would please come to the podium. Give us your name and who you're with. I'm Deborah Fisher, and I'm with uh, Tennessee Coalition for Open Government that tracks changes to the public records and open meetings laws. And, um, you know, wanted to thank Representative Sapicki for working on the bill. We were concerned about the original bill that allowed the social media platform to um, satisfy notice requirements. Um, but um, so this language that's in here um, noted that it doesn't <laughs> have the five day minimum. Uh, but the language in here is basically from a uh, Court of Appeals case in 1999 that lays out a criteria for special called meetings under the Open Meetings Act. This title uh, has something different for county commissions that goes above and beyond that, which is a five-day um, requirement for notice for special meetings. And I thought that what the bill did is what Representative Wright said, which was you can't meet the deadline. You can't meet the, this came up because a Murray County Commission could not meet the deadline of the paper to get an ad in. So it would be in for five days ahead. 
So I thought what this did was you still have to publish in the newspaper if you can meet the ad deadline for the five days ahead. But I thought that the five days was still implied that you'd at least have to use these other methods, you know, on the website and some other method five days ahead. But, you know, I guess that's up to interpretation. I, I didn't think it was, but so anyway, but we are supportive of the bill, um, obviously. And um, so, yeah. Any questions for Mrs. Fisher? Seeing none, thank you, Ms. Fisher, yep. for being with us today. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate your time and interest in this bill. At this time, we will hear from our second speaker, uh, Dave Gold with the Tennessee Press Association. Please give us your name and who you're with, sir. Well, thank you. My name is Dave Gould. Uh, my company is Main Street Media of Tennessee, and I'm here uh, representing the Tennessee Press Association. I'm on the board of directors, and um, and thank you for for having me here today. Um, and I'm here to say that the Tennessee Press Association uh, is okay with this bill, but also want to make a few comments about newspapers and public notices. Uh, as members of or our organization have testified in the past, you know we believe the publication of notices in local newspapers is a matter of transparency. However, we all know the media landscape has changed dramatically in the last 20 years, probably more so than uh, at any time since the invention of the printing press. And while we continue to uh, publish, we do face tremendous odds. Uh, while Google and Facebook have used monopolistic practices to put a stranglehold on the digital ad market, uh, the rise of Amazon and others have decimated small local businesses, and historically, they're some of our best customers. And while we continue to publish fearlessly and reach millions of people across the state, there's nothing easy about our industry. And I've been asked before whether or not it is, it is a responsibility of government to subsidize a newspapers through public notice advertising. And the answer to that is a resounding no. As a small business owner, the person most responsible uh, for keeping my business a going concern is me. And like most small business owners, I work tire tirelessly and feel a tremendous responsibility to my employees. The Tennessee Press Association has 134 members, and the vast majority are owned by people like me, headquartered, here in Tennessee, we're small locally owned businesses who hire local people and invest in our communities. We give back, we're an important resource for local people and organizations and we care deeply about our cities because we live here and we go to church here and we shop here and send our kids to school here. And we wanna see our communities thrive. We are just about the only people anymore at city council meetings, covering high school basketball games, providing space to local nonprofits, doing stories about interesting people or publishing editorials and opinions from local legislators. As for those who believe our industry is dying, I present my company as Exhibit A. I founded my company in 2013 with three newspapers and 10 employees, and we had 3,000 subscribers. Today, we publish 13 weekly newspapers. We have 17 websites, social media pages, podcasts, e-newsletters, streaming videos, and more. We have 60 employees and reach about 2 million people a month. We focus on local, local news, and that's what people are interested in reading about. That's why newspapers like ours are still the most effective way to distribute information about public notices. And there are others like me all across the state who are working as hard as we can to maintain strong local media businesses to ensure we can stay viable and continue, continue to be the most effective way to keep citizens informed about what's going on in their communities. Thank you. Any questions for our speaker? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Go, we appreciate you being here today, taking your time and interest in this bill. Is there any questions for legal or anybody else? If not, we'll go back into session without objection. We're back in session. We are on amendment number 12112. Uh, if there be no questions, we're ready to vote on the amendment. All those in favor of amendment 012112, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The amendment is now on the bill. Chairman Sapicki, you're recognized on your bill as amended. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. No further comments. Question has been called. We're ready to vote. All those in favor of House Bill 1677 as amended, please say aye. aye. Those no. Bill moves on to calendar and rules, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This concludes our business for today. Uh, does anybody have any announcements or personal orders? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. <laughs>